hi guys you're welcome to the sewing tutorial kindly watch the drafting part check my channel or i will drop the link in the comment section so that you can know what we are doing so guys let's start sewing for those of you that have watched and those of you that have not watched go and watch it now these are all the pattern i've cut them on the fabric and on the lining yeah fabric and lining fabric and lining then i added half inch allowance all to the side the upper parts and the side um before we sew i'm still going to show you the yoke i also cut the yoke also i cut four pieces each now let's start sewing guys you're going to take your cup the way the pattern paper is placed on it and i notch where you are going to be sewing joining it together so you are going to take your cup your center front and your side front i gum everything with with st or the lining i gum the lining with paper gum so you're going to take one piece of the cup and the other center front then you join it with half inch you repeat the same thing for the second cup as well make sure your notches matches each other then you will now do that for the lining piece so let me go and sew it now this is it guys after sewing you can see that is how the shape of the cup is so you are going to be notching you will notch all the same the same allowance so that when you iron it it will be able to lay flat so do that for both the actual fabric and the lining then you take your breast ham and you open the same and iron it so meet this is it after ironing now when i iron i use sd to cover the seam that is why it is giving me this cup effect i did that for the lining as well the next thing is to take your cup this cup size is a cup of 44 and my client's bust is a bust of 43 so you are going to sew half inch at that you fold it and you notch the middle so you can sew half inch on the on the under bust side after that guys you're going to place your cup on it you're going to place your cup on it and use your gum to just gum it so you can secure it down so i did that for the two i use my gum i use b700 if you don't have this you can use your hemi gum just to iron it that way your cup doesn't shift it makes it stay very well so after this we are going to be sewing it now i have now sewed it round you can see the seam the seam the stitches on it rather this is how the inside is looking like so guys the next thing is to take your center piece as your center front now the center front is cut on a nude crepe you have to check the crepe the nude that matches your client skin so you also take your side front and you place it on each other and you sew it with half inch when you sew it's going to give you something like this so you do that for the lining and the actual fabric so let me do that guys then for the back as well you're also going to take the back and you're going to sew so you take the side back and the center back and you'll be joining it together with half an inch you do that for the second side 
and also repeat the same thing for the lining the back lining that is the lining as well repeat the same process for the lining I'm trying to show you every point every part so you understand you understand the video now I'm going to be sewing all of them together after sewing so meets this is how it is this is the back as well Now you are going to take your front part and we'll be creating our boning channel. You're going to mark all your star lines on it. Now this is the bone channel we are going to do. You will take, you're going to cut one, one and a half inch. You fold it into two. You sew the edge. You sew the side. After sewing, you will now use your broom or if you have a loop toner to turn it from the inside out i normally use a broom because i don't have a loop toner so you are going to turn it just watch the way i'm turning it. it's very easy so when you're turning you keep pushing the the down parts you keep pushing it out so you turn like that so it is very easy that was how i was able to turn plenty as many as i want then you iron it now when you're ironing don't iron the seam let the seam let it not be on the side let it be inside so that your sewing seam does not show so i iron as many as possible even though i'm not going to use everything so this is the regining boning we'll be using we are going to be attaching inserting the boning inside so you take your center piece like your front and you create your your star lines the first star line is the middle use your chalk to roll it down then in between the first star line that's the middle and the and the dots this line you're going to divide it by two you get the midpoint then you roll it all the way to the top now the third star line is actually the dots that we sew. Then the fourth star line, you're going to measure two inches or one and a half. You're going to reel it up. Now it depends on how you want your star line to be. You can create any star line you want. Then the next one, two inches, then you take it all the way to the top, roll it. Now you're going to repeat what you did on this other side. You're going to repeat it on the other side. So that is me repeating everything I did on one side, on the other side. After that, guys, when we are sewing our bony channel, you're going to leave 0 0.75 on the down part. Like if you are fixing your boning or half inch, your boning will not get to that part. And also, that place I'm marking, your bony will not get to that part also. And you don't want any bony to disturb where you are sewing. The next thing is to take all your bony channel and you measure the length you want. Now, for the center front, there's the way the shape is going to be. I mark three and a half inch on each point down you cut it mark the other side from that point three and a half then you cut so that is how you are going to get that shape you then you now take the center piece and you place it like that and you cut so that is how the shape is going to be then you also cut the boning channel for all of them 
cut 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 guys cut guys after cutting everything we are now going to insert our bone inside that is another easy way of sewing your bone into your fabric so just take your bone and you insert it inside it's going to go through because of the one and a half inches allowance that we cut so when you insert it when you get to the upper part leave like one inch then you cut off your boning the one inch now serves as half inch left for the upper part then half inch left for the down part so you cut what you don't need then you push it through leaving half inch up there and leaving half inch down so you do the same thing for the rest burning the rest channel rather so that is me doing that guys if you are watching this video and you don't subscribe to my channel please kindly do so turn on the bell so you can notify the anytime i upload a new video and like this video if you are finding it interesting that's another way to encourage us after getting all what we need you are going to iron it then you now stitch it on your star lines you created the next thing is to also create our star line for the back now the back is going to be on the lining not on the not on the actual fabric here so the back i'm also creating all the star lines from the dart two inches you roll it to the top then the other side also yeah so guys we have like four boning that we are going to put on this back now i left some allowance at that upper part because my boning will not get up there then at the down part also i left half half inch because the boning will not get there now for this back we don't need to create a bone channel we are sewing it on the lining guys after sewing it this is what it is now so means you this back i lose the side of the back because we are going to put in our lace now the lace does not have any any joining because it's a luxury fabric and you don't need to be cutting that is why i had to lose that side back so when i cut the lace i'm using my aiming gum just to place it so that i can iron it and so it can stay put after that i did that for the second back then before when you now go and you trim off then you can now join the side back i hope you understand so guys the front also we are still going to put the the lace now the lace does not have any joining the lace does not have any joining at all so so made after gumming and attaching the side back the center back rather this is how it is looking like then the front also i also use gum to secure it down now i just want to show you how i was able to cut that front i use the lining fold the lining into two you place it on the lace and you cut that was how i was able to to cut the lace so i'm trying to show you what i did yeah because we don't need 
any cuts on our on our actual fabric guys for the yoke i cut two two piece each yeah because we're going to be using we're going to double the yoke i like doubling my yoke after we open the front yoke we are going to be sewing the neck with half inch you sew it with the allowance you added after sewing you're going to trim it very close to the stitch it makes it it makes your work very neat when you sew your yoke and you trim that is me trimming it guys after trimming you're going to turn it that way and you now use you now sew on it just use your stitch to secure it down then you sew it without the shoulder do not sew the shoulder down because you're going to be turning the neckline you're going to be turning the shoulder now for the back also because it's a keyhole back and we are using button and since we are sewing a blue dress i decided to cut a blue strap strap rather so you place it that way you fold it into two now put it inside not outside like this you are going to see what i did later <laughs> just fold it and let it be inside not it coming out this way so you place it on it you place the lining part on it then you sew the neck you sew like that like this and like that then for the other side you sew the neck and this one you're not putting any strap because that is where the button is going to be so you sew it round let me sew it guys and i'll show you after sewing sew it i'm going to be trimming off the excess also So you trim off the excess so your work can be neat. Trim the second back yoke as well. Then you now be turning it turn it from the inside out yeah you also turn this one now look at what i said when i said i i you're supposed to put that thing inside so when you turn it is coming to the back not inside so i had to lose that back and put the the strap inside and correct it so after that this is what we have now you're going to secure it down with your stitch except the shoulder after that guys you take your front piece and you take your back so we'll be joining it shoulder to shoulder you place them on each other you place the second one now you take the back, you open it that way, you take the other one, you also open it that way and you sew with the sewing allowance you added. I think I added half inch allowance, so you are going to sew it with half inch. After sewing guys, this is what I have. and. I also trim the allowance inside the shoulder. Trim yours as well if you are sewing. Trim the other one too. So now we have our yoke ready. 
the next thing is to take your cup we'll be attaching the cup to the yoke first now when you are attaching the cup to the yoke the center front of the yoke you're going to leave like 0 0.25 allowance before you start attaching so when you just leave a little then you now sew all the way to the end you can use your pin to secure it down so it doesn't move when you're sewing after that i did the same thing for the other side place your cup there you leave 0 0.25 then you pin now this is what we have after pinning i'm going to be sewing it now guys i have finished sewing then i'm removing the pins so the next thing is to take our front piece and start joining now we are joining make sure the scent the dots matches each other the dots must match with your center piece so you sew like that and you also sew the center front but if you cannot sew that way please use your pins to secure it down that's why we work with pins a lot so we don't make mistakes mm. so use your pins to hold every point down now I'll do the same thing for the second side then I'm going to sew after sewing some bits look at how it is it is very neat look at the cup the, even without putting um, what's it called underwire the cup is standing like it is perfect the next thing is to take your lining piece and you repeat the same process so the second cup as well when you sew guys you're not going to take your lining your front lining because we'll be turning into the front then start from the middle use your pins to hold that part down and use your pins to hold everything down the next thing is to sew guys I have sewed the lining to the actual fabric and it is looking like this we'll now notch inside so your neckline can sit properly So notch every point after notching then you top, top stitch now if you want to top stitch you can use your hemigone cut a long hemigone and you place it underneath so when you are top stitching you are also sewing the hemigone to the lining so that when you iron your neckline can sit properly after that guys this is what I have now the next thing is to also join the back yoke I have joined one so I'm showing you the second one just take your back piece and you place the yoke on it and you sew starting from your center dart starting from your center dart the yoke is actually going to give you a guide after joining it so means this is oh god this is how it is and we're going to be turning it with the lining so now i have turned the back and the front with our lining the next thing is to top stitch when you don't top stitch you're not going to turn the side the center back yeah you're going to turn your lining right side facing right side and you sew with half inch just the way you see me touching it like that after sewing guys this is what we have now 
we are going to attach our boning you can put from the first boning i did there that's the center that please put another boning let it be two boning so it will stay close leaving like one, one inch in between each bone so that your back structure can be firm so you are going to sew your boning on the sewing allowance that half inch you sew you're going to sew your boning on it that way after that this is what we have yeah i have sewed the boning on it and you will now turn it from the inside turn it outside that is me trying to turn it so when you turn you have something like this iron it so you can lay flat then the next thing is to take your skirt part you all know you all know how to cut a skirt so take your down piece your skirt part fold it into two and we'll be cutting the backs now from the upper part i went down by 4.5 and i connect it to the waistline so this is me trying to connect then you are going to cut it off After cutting that, I also use it to cut the lining as well, the front skirt lining. I place it on it and I cut. This is what it is. So guys, you take back your front piece. Now we'll be joining side to side. That's fabric to fabric, lining to lining, because we are doing inseam for designs like this it is good when you do inseam so i'm putting the two two inches allowance i added when i was drafting i also put the allowance on all the side the lining and the actual fabric This is me just trying to show you that I put it on the lining too. Then we are going to be sewing. After sewing, sew it. This is it. I have ironed it. So when you close it, your upper part is looking neat and pretty. So you're going to take part of your satin that you have and you cut one and a half inches long strap. Cut it off because we'll be using it as a bias to turn the down part. Now this down part, just run a stitch on it to secure it down before you now use your bias. You fold the bias from the edge there so it will be neat fold it inside then you sew it so meat this is what i'm talking about after sewing it it is like this so the upper part is ready the next thing now is to work on your skirt part you are going to take your back skirt. You place the two on each other. I added one inch sewing allowance for the zip at the back. So I'm going to be sewing the one inch all the way down. I will do the same thing for the lining. The reason why I'm sewing it down is because I want to iron so I can get my crease line for the back. After sewing, I iron. Now that is how it is. 
the next thing is to take your front we'll be doing one small draping by the side my client wants the draping so from the upper part i went down by half inch then i cut some i cut i don't know how many inches i cut but just cut enough fabric that will be able to that will work for you then i pleat them after pleating i use my pins to secure it down now my client is the kind of client that would <laughs> that will pick like from three different designs she will pick each size for me and combine together <laughs> i have crazy clients <laughs> so after pinning them that is how the drip is going to look like now i have put the sewing allowance on the skirt pattern as well so i'm going to be joining the sides together like front skirts join them to the side then join the line into separately like a separate front and a separate front lining and the back after doing that guys this is what it is we are also doing inner sewing for this skirt part that is why we join skirts separately lining separately so when you join them you open the zip side so you can have it all flat then the next thing is you take your lining and you'll be turning the down part now you can make your fabric longer than the lining but in this case i think i did it the same so you turn it the ones we took off for the lacing part so when you sew you're going to notch to the point you sew so that you can have easy and ease allowance to join it to your upper part i hope you guys understand what i mean just sew to that point from the zip side here i think i did one and a half inch after the zip then you now close your zip allowance when you sew you also sew your zip allowance all the way down after sewing it guys this is how it is looking like yeah then i'm going to turn it outside when you turn it outside now your back side the back the lacing part is closed that is how to do a very neat work it is closed now the next thing is to just join the lining use your machine to just hold it together when you get to the half you are going to start from that half inch you notch so me this is how it is so this is the front now the lining is joined to the fabric you're not going to take your center your upper part now before we join the upper part to the down part on this um, picture you are seeing here that is the design we're trying to create now i just cut some nets and i just drape them together just split them together then from the center front i went out by one and a half inch and i just arranged it like that now from this front here you are going to measure one and a half i did one and a half there that is where my sewing is going to start from now i'm going to sew all the way to the waist length you are going to mark it on this upper part so you can know where your waist length stop you are not going to sew to the back you can see make sure your side seam matches with the side seam of where you are sewing of the upper part you also sew that way use your chalk to rule the back's effect down yeah before you sew so you don't miss it after sewing some it this is what we have 
this is how it is the next thing is to sew your zip side we already have your line your crease line there so it is easy just sew it then you'll be fixing your zip after sewing you now take your zip from the waist there i think i measured nine and a half or ten inches here so after sewing the zip this is what we have then for the slits i did 20 inches because she's not tall though oh is she tall she's not tall but i did 20 inches <laughs> Yeah, so that is the zip now it's an inbuilt corset that is why that is inside now this is the front then i did not join this draping sorry this net at the front to the shoulder um, normally not normally that is what she wants you're supposed to join it inside the shoulder let it go into the shoulder but i did not do that because that is what she wants now the armhole i'm just going to trim the armhole and use a bias to turn the armhole she doesn't want a sleeve as well so this is what i'm talking about i took the net all the way to the back then i used a stitch to hold it together so i'm going to be cutting off the excess net then the next thing is to i'm using needle and thread just to hold the shoulder together to hold the shoulder together so that is me sewing it now so me you can see different out outfits right <laughs> it took me days to finish it not because i don't want to but because there are too much stones beaded stones on that fabric so i have to take my time now you're going to just use your stitch also to hold the bust side then on this on the side also i also just use my stitch to hold it down now i'm going to be using this um zipper bead or something yeah just to cover this so miss so this is her first fitting and um she keeps dragging this camera for me she doesn't want me to do this video i has to just beg her now this is how it is on her body i made the hip bigger because she wants to wear a he bought a hip is 42 but i did it 44 thank you guys for watching i'll see you all in my next one bye